what's good love life crew it's you boy, musa back with another video today we've got geography now iran now a lot of people have been telling me to come to iran like musa come to iran come to iran because obviously a lot of subscribers and a lot of people on instagram like 90 percent of my instagram followers are from iran so i get that all the time whenever i upload a picture of me in a different country gambia when i went to turkey a lot of comments are come to Iran, come to Iran, come to Iran, you enjoy it, you love it. So today I thought, you know what, it would be nice for me to check out this video. Um, it's 14 minutes long. I'm not, I'm not sure if, I don't think the guy's Iranian. So, you know, you won't know a country unless you actually have been there or you live there. So I'm going to take what he says with a pinch of salt. I'm not going to be like, oh, everything he says is right because it's most likely not going to be. But we're gonna watch it and get educated on Iran. If there's any other videos related to like Iranian Iranian culture and stuff like that, send it my way. I shall check it out. Just comment below, and yeah, I'll keep an eye out. But yeah, let's get into this one. Let's go. Do not call most of these people Arabs. Interesting. It's time to learn geography. No! <laughs> Everybody, I'm your host, Barbie. Okay, let me break this down so you can quickly get the distinction. You've heard of Persia, right? Yeah. Persian Empire, Persian yeah. rugs, Persian yep. cats, yep. the Prince of Persia, which, mm -hmm. by the way, Disney got incredibly accurate. Yes, Persia is pretty much synonymous with Iran. Now, not everyone in Iran is Persian, but it's a huge part of their story, which we will begin discussing now. Okay, let's go. Talk to me. Teach me. Okay, let's be frank. Iran seems to get their fair share of the news quite often in the Western media. However, conflict issues aside, Iran has a deep history and story in the Middle East that extends millennia in the past that would probably be wise to educate yourself on. 100%. Iran is located in Western Asia, bordered by seven other countries, as well as the Caspian Sea to the north, the Persian Gulf, and the Gulf of Oman to the south, divided by the Strait of Hormuz, which is like one of the most important sea passages in the world. Hey, it's Arabian Gulf. Eh, most people have called it Persian Gulf, and it's been that way for centuries. Plus, Arabs have their own sea. Just let them have it. <laughs> My man said, let them have it, you know? Provinces ...with the capital Tehran, located in the north-central region. Now, keep in mind, before Tehran, Iran actually had 30 previous capitals throughout their history, more than any other country in the world. Wow. Otherwise, Iran also divides the country into five non-constituent unit regions for administrative purposes, each one containing six provinces, except for one region containing seven, which also includes the capital. Finally, although they are administered by Iran, the country also has a current dispute over... Musa! Musa and the greater Jeez, that's me. with the United Arab Emirates nearby the Strait of Hormuz and the Persian Gulf. After Tehran, the largest cities are Mashhad in the east and Isfahan in the center. And the largest okay. airports are, of course, Tehran's two twins, Mehrabad and Iman Khomeini International, Mashhad International, and Shiraz International. Iran okay. also takes ownership of about 30 or so islands in the Gulf and technically one island in the Caspian Sea, Ashur Ade Island, which, however, is kind of more like a loose peninsula. One thing you have to understand is that Iran takes their position and borders very seriously as they are kind of like a land bridge located right at the crossroads between the Middle East, the Caucasus, as well as the Central and South Asian regions. The most important and largest seaport would be Bandar Abbas, which also houses the Iranian Navy, located right at the entrance at the Strait of Hormuz. Otherwise, due to its incredible history, Iran is overflowing with landmarks and sites. Some of the top notable ones might include places like Naqsh Jahan Square, Ooh. Milad Tower, Golestan Palace, the Persian Ooh. Garden, the Armenian monastic ensembles of Iran, the tomb of... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, if it's nice... We play it twice, you know the rules. Wow. Landmarks and sites, some of the top notable ones might include places like Nox Oh my god. Beautiful. Ooh. And the mountain in the back as well. Bruh. It's very sweet. Whee! Jahan Square, Milad. See, see, the the tower thing I don't like because man don't man don't do heights in it. <laughs> I keep a feet on the ground, you know what I'm saying? Don't do those things there. So I wouldn't ever enter this type of building. But from what I'm seeing, the view and that, it seems like... See, I like walking in it. I don't know how safe it is to walk in Iran. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. But me, I like to walk places. It looks like there's a lot of places to walk. <laughs> that's, that's my traveling technique. Like, even when I went to Paris, I got on the train once in like over a week. I was there for like seven, I think seven days? I think it was like a week, yeah. Only took the train once, and that was like late at night to go home. That's it. Other than that, I walked to the place and back, even if it took me one hour, two hours. Same thing in Milan. So I like to walk places. So I don't know. Let me know in the conversation how safe it is to walk places, unless places like extremely far, like London. Everywhere's totally far. You can't just walk places. Um, but yeah, it does look like a nice place to walk. And the mountain, the mountains in the back is what's got me so far. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> 
This place glowing. <laughs> Look at those lights. See, this type of place I wouldn't want to go in because I'll I'll be afraid to touch anything. <laughs> you know the ones where you're just like looking at it and just like, yeah. <laughs> you need permission to sit down. <laughs> Someone's like, Mr. Sit down. Uh, my friend, you need to cover this up with plastic. You know how they were? Africa, <laughs> African parents be doing that as well. Covering all chairs with plastic and shit. <laughs> Oh, 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 what garden? White Naqsha Jahan Square, Milad Tower, Golestan Palace, Persian. <sighs> Persian garden looks very nice. Very, very nice. Garden, the Armenian monastic and mm. samples of Iran, the tomb of Hafiz. I like what I see. Oh damn! And then you got a snow mountain. Oh my god! I think I'll take photos until my my camera breaks. <laughs> tower Freedom Monument, the Pigeon Tower, Yaz, the holiest place for Zarat. Now that that looks incredible. Is that made like out of mud? That's like a mud thing, but there's something. Mud is strong. I swear to you, people don't understand. You don't need cement to build a house, but mud, mud is strong. I don't know if it's mud, but I'm guessing right now. Astrians, Zandil, Damn. The Mayaman's cave village. Wow. The Imam Reza Shrine. Khaju Bridge. Argebam. Even the, the way the sun just come. Oh my god. Bruh. What's this man trying to do? Make me book a ticket, bruh. Hey, take it easy on me. System, the tomb of Cyrus the Great, the tomb of Daniel. Too many famous mosques and shrines to list, and pretty much everything in Persepolis. Iran was able to build so much of their own personal space, partially due to the fact that they were easily well protected by natural boundaries or barricaded in. You decide. Let's explain in. <laughs> You know what's funny? The world's hottest surface temperature ever recorded was 70.7 degrees Celsius in the Loop Desert in Iran, and yet Iran is also like the best ski resort area in the Middle East. First of all, Iran's most imp I, I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm not gonna say math. I'm not gonna say nothing. But hot and cold. Yeah. Important topographical barriers yeah, are the Sakharov system. Mountains in the west, which also contain the largest lake, Urmia, and the mountains also feed the longest river, the Karun, in the south, which flows into the gulf, as well as the Alborz Mountains along the north, which contain the largest mountain, Mount Damavand, which is also the tallest volcano in all of Asia. Okay, remind me not to go here. It's still active. There's so much mining for... It's still active. Remind me not to go Potential there. In these mountains as well, which makes Iran the largest producer of turquoise and zinc. Otherwise, okay. they have two main deserts, the Kabir and Lut, located in the central plateau. And the only real flat part of Iran is in the Khuzestan region right next to Iran. Iran is right on the boundary of the Arabian and Eurasian tectonic plates, which in return makes Iran the country with the most number of major earthquakes of at least 5.5 on the Richter scale annually. <laughs> So he's one of those guys. He will start off very nice, very sweet, make it have a nice and everything, you know, the honeymoon stage. And then you get into a relationship and you're like, fuck, what did I get myself into? That's what he's doing to me right now. It's cool though. Minor. Let's carry on. Yeah, well, minor explodier. Now, Iran is kind of like this strange anomaly that sticks out from the rest of the Middle East because it has alpine mountains with flowers and snow and water and green, especially. I swear, because there was a moment I was like, that looks like Vikings. That looks like, you know, some Scandinavian country. There was one of the pictures. I was like, what? That's it, Iran? Look like Scotland. I mean, sure, there are dry, arid deserts too, but overall, Iran is a lot more lush. This allows them to harbor river valleys for agriculture, which makes them the number one producer of pistachios, saffron, stone. Pistachios, now you're talking my language. By the way, Iranians love saffron. They put it in like half of everything. Speaking of which, some top foods from Iran might include. Talk to me, talk to me. My stomach. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Walnuts. Woo! Pomegranate walnut stew. Whoa, 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 what was that? Cool, what? Speaking of which, some top foods from Iran might include things like pomegranate walnut stew, cuckoo, cuckoo, Mirza Kasemi, very rice. 
Mm -mm -mm. See, right now I'm on a diet. But when I go to Iran, I'm going on a seafood diet. You know that one? Rice, <laughs> like rice, bakala. Oh, you look very sweet. That, that, I don't know if it's beef or lamb, but I look tender. Shooting various kebabs like juje, kubide, torsh, and bakhiyari. Desserts like rose. Is that rice pudding? Is that rice pudding? Water pudding, khal. Oh my god. I'm not gonna make it through this video. This is gonna be a long video. Let me just let it play. No, let me let it play. By the way, half those dishes had saffron in them. Alcohol is technically banned, however, people kind of smuggle it in. Nah, I don't care about alcohol. Please cancel, cancel. Yeah, I don't care about that. Yeah, yeah, I don't care about that. Now that I took my language, tea? I don't know much about caviar. Caviar, caviar, caviar. But tea, yes, we do that daily. Of caviar in the world, mostly from sturgeons fished off the coast of the Caspian. Speaking of which, Iran surprisingly has quite an array of wildlife, including gazelles, wolves, falcons, storks, buzzards, and of course the famous Persian cat. Speaking of cat, very ugly. Iran is home to some of the last only few remaining surviving Persian lions, which is by the way the national animal, Persian leopards, and yes, even Asiatic cheetahs. Wait, aren't those like African animals? Actually, a lot of animals we affiliate with Africa had historically roamed all across the Middle East and South Asian yeah. regions. Hundred percent, yeah. It's true. Why today we have elephants in India, rhinos in Indonesia. Unfortunately, mm. most of them have been killed off or incredibly endangered. The mm. more you, unfortunately, no. The biggest natural it's resource, true. though, would have to be no surprise. Oil. Iran is the second largest oil producer in the Middle East after Saudi Arabia, and about 60% of their total reserves are located around the Persian Gulf. It's okay. estimated that the country should have about 125 billion barrels in reservoirs, 10% of the world's total reserves, and they pump out about 4 million barrels a day. That's a lot. So with all the geographic isolation but abundance of resources, you might wonder what is life like in Iran? Well, Talk to me. So glad you asked. Talk to me. Let's go. Let's get some culture. Yeah. Iran is interesting because it's caught in this strange new transition period in which everything in the new generation of millennials has a tincture of subtle defiance. First of all, Iran has about 80 million people and is the second most populated country in the Middle East after Egypt and has the highest number of Shias in the world. About 62% of the country is ethnically Persian, whereas the second largest ethnic group are the Azeris and about 16% Kurds and about 10%, while the remainder is made up of smaller but noticeable groups like the Lur, the Baluchis, Arabs, Turkic groups, and others. They okay. also use the Iranian Rial as their currency, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now let's emphasize this one more time. Persians are not, not Arabs. Arabs. That's like the worst thing you can say to them. First of all, what is it like to be a Persian? Well, you kind of have to understand that Iran evolved a lot differently from all the other countries in the Middle East. Okay. History will take way too long to explain, but the quickest way I can put it, proto elements Elam, Median Empire, Persian or Achaemenid Empire, Alexander the Great, the Seleucid, Parthian, and Sassanid Empires, Islam enters through the Umayyad Caliphate, the Abbasid Caliphate, Safarids and Samanids come in from the east, then some weird splitting up, the Ghaznavid, Seljuk, and Khwarezmian Empires, Mongols, the Ilkhanid, Timurid, Safavid, and Afsharid Empires, the Zand and Qajar Dynasties, Quick Pahlavi Dynasty, Islamic Republic, a little drama here and there, and here we- AKA history! Y'all got history, not history, because that's too fast. You got history. Now, the biggest distinction of Iran would probably be the language. The official language of Iran is Persian or Farsi. Yeah, Indian Farsi. European language also spoken in Afghanistan and Tajikistan, although they have their own dialects. Ah, that's why my woman can understand some of the comments. She's like, ah, oh, I know what they're saying. I'm looking at her like, right, I don't understand nothing. Just completely unintelligible to Arabic. The second largest distinction would be that they are the largest Shia Muslim country in the world with doctrines that run their ideologies and legislation. If you don't ah. the difference between Sunnis and Shias, basically, Shias believe that Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law Ali was supposed to be the rightful successor rather than Abu Bakr who became the first caliph. If you don't know what any of that means, let me make it even easier. Shias this guy sunnis no this guy done the interesting thing though is that persian still holds on to a lot of ancient persian customs and traditions that predate even islam for example for over 3,000 years persians and other persian related people groups across the world still celebrate Nowruz or persian new year usually on march 21st or the vernal equinox a mostly secular holiday however it actually has roots and is considered holy to zoroastrians zoroastrianism actually started in iran and at one point was actually the state religion persians okay. also have their own distinct art which usually depicts human 
Asian figures more often than other Sumi cultures. They have nice. their own traditions, clothing, music, opera. <laughs> music. <laughs> they got that on lock. Bruh, everybody can sing. I don't care who. They can all sing. They come out the womb singing. You know, babies normally come out the womb crying. Wah, 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 wah. They come out the la 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 la. That's what they come out doing. Polo, Jesus. Sports. I mean, polo was invented here, and they have that ancient warrior training thing. They have handicrafts. I mean, everybody knows that Persian rugs are like some of sought after in the world. Look However, at that. Not all Iranians are Persians, and some of these groups have expressed separatist movement desires in the past, but with pretty much no actual success. The second largest group, the Turkic Azeris or Azerbaijanis, mostly okay. live in the northwest along the borders of Turkey and the Caucasus region, where their cousins, the actual Azerbaijanis in Azerbaijan, live. They are basically the same people, except one group speaks Farsi. Although exactly. Uh, are kind of hard to estimate. Today, there are about twice as many to three times more Azeris living in Iran than there are in Azerbaijan. Then you have the Kurds that live along the west as well. Okay. And then you have the Arabs that mostly inhabit the flat Khuzestan areas by Iraq. You have the okay. Baluchi people in the southwest along the border with Pakistan. Each mm. of these people groups has their own language, culture, and history. Oh, and keep in mind, Persia is mentioned numerous That's nice, though. I like that. That keeps a country interesting. You know what I mean? Times in the Bible, Iranian Jews believe that they are descended from Queen Esther, and they, as well as Christians, believe that King Cyrus was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. Speaking of which, although the vast majority of the population is Shia Muslim, there are communities of non-Muslims, mostly Christians and Jews. However, outside religions are strictly monitored and confined to only a few places of worship, as it is illegal to build churches or synagogues. Selling of... Really? Literature is illegal and apostasy from a Muslim is punishable, which wow. is funny because just like in China, Iran has one of the fastest growing underground Christian communities in the world and disputedly the most in the Middle East. So how wow. does Iran hold all these people together? Well, in order to speed up the Persian assimilation process, other languages are banned from schools and they have a system in which cooperation is rewarded and resistance is punished by the IRGC. So it's kind of like, join us and the rewards shall be bountiful. Um, I have my own thing going on, but thanks. Join us, and the rewards shall be bountiful. Speaking of which, the government is a little confusing. You have both the regular legislators, and then you have the theocratic leaders. Essentially, the Ayatollah has the most power. He is not only the leader of the country, but also the entire Shia community inside and outside of Iran. He's selected by a community of clerics called the Assembly of Experts, who also have authority to approve all of the presidential candidates during election time. From there, the president appoints people to the various ministries and offices, whereas the Ayatollah appoints the military leader and handles all other various duties. I don't want to say the Ayatollah Ayatollah is like the Pope of the Shia faith, but in some ways he kind of is. This is kind of where the Islamic revolution comes into play and where all the modern drama with Iran kind of starts. Long story short, they took down the Shah, which they believed was a Western puppet figure, and then they instituted a more conservative Islamic Republic. This changed everything. The thing mm. is, this was all nearly half a century ago. Today, an entirely new generation of modernized, digital, tech-savvy Iranians has entered the stage, mm. and the country is seeing a completely new culture shift that they can't stop. About 70% of the country is under 30 years old. Old, many of whom don't really even like the rules, which means you have a lot of trust me. I, I, I see it all the time in my comment section. A lot of uh, people that DM me as well, a lot of them are not happy with the way the country is being run. But uh, what, what can you do? Do you know what I mean? I guess if they all come together, eventually they, but then again, if a man sticks by his word and he's trying to say everything in the faith of God, then it's going to be very hard to convince that person. I swear to you. <laughs> intrepid youths running the show now even the police are getting way more lenient because the police are getting younger too everyone That's in also Iran true. is now kind of trying to find like loopholes and subtle cheats to avoid the religiously imposed laws Although really the hijab is required for all women in public most women just loosely wear it exposing their necks and front hair almost as if it's like a fashion accessory rather than a religious article skateboarding okay. punk rock and metal culture has already penetrated the youth even women although see now we've obviously they Hijab now, I think that should be up to the woman. I ain't gonna lie, that's me personally. You know, what I mean, I don't think you should force anyone to do anything. You shouldn't be forced. It's interesting because it's like Persian punk rock and metal. People meet at underground clubs and parties all the time, wearing whatever they want with open bars and music. If you catch them in their element, Persians are actually seriously like some of the most fun people you'll ever meet. And the crazy thing is, see, I do believe that. I do believe that because the way Persians love the music in it. Yeah, just say just the, just the way from what I'm seeing now because obviously I react to Persian music. So what I'm seeing from Persians, I'm seeing that they, they really love living living that life, you know what I mean? Enjoying music, good man energy, good man vibes, you know what I mean? Even though they like to complain a, a, a lot, but a lot of people just told me that's part of their DNA. <laughs> They're like, Persians, we just love to complain, it's part of our DNA, but I do see that they love to live life about this it's nothing shockingly new to the police or government it gives them a little bit of a headache but after half a century it's kind of like mm, dude 
Whatever. <laughs> yeah, you didn't really expect that, did you? Persian punk rock rebels with hijabs and skateboards, right? And that's what goes on in. What? 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 What, what was that? What was she, what yeah, you didn't really. What? 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 Huh? What's happening? Why she got spikes in her head? Didn't really expect that, did you? Persian punk rock rebels with hijabs and skateboards, right? And that's what goes on in the inside. Now let's see how they leak out. Okay, let's see. Now here's where things get a little tricky because in order to understand Iran's outside relations, again, you kind of have to look at Iran through the lens of both pre and post 1979 revolution. First of all, Iraq is sometimes called Arab Iran, although don't say that to them, as they have the second highest population of Shias and hold two incredibly important holy Shia sites. They've mostly moved on from the war in the 80s and the two have good ties, mostly. Afghanistan and Tajikistan are like their cousins that have different political views and it's awkward when they have dinner together, but nonetheless, they still mostly get along. Russia. And Venezuela are probably the best friends outside of the Middle East, as Hugo Chavez frequently visited Ahmadinejad and made numerous trade deals. The Iranian car company Holdro is imported and partially manufactured in Venezuela. And Russia was like a key ally in many of the war conflicts post-revolution. Surprisingly, they are also one of the few countries that have kind of decent ties to North Korea. They've pledged cooperation in education and cultural spheres in the past. The okay. Azerbaijanis of the North, of course, love Azerbaijan, no surprise. Bahrain is like Saudi Arabia's girlfriend that they keep trying to flirt with and steal. When it comes to their best friends though most iranians i talked to have said probably syria and turkey, turkey yeah. although it's a little complicated especially with all the current drama going on turkey and iran have more or less always been on good terms mm. especially in business they are working on a plan to enter the european petroleum industry to rival russia each country makes up a large pop rival who wait wait say that, say, say that one more time they rival are working who? on a plan to enter the european petroleum industry to rival russia russia are we talking about we're talking about the same Russia? Oh, okay. Let me let me leave it there. Each country makes up a large population of tourists that visit each other every year. Syria or Turkey's amazing. Hey, Istanbul. <laughs> oh, the moment the world opens up again, that's my first location. Istanbul. I'm going right back. <laughs> the Syrian government has more or less worked alongside with Iran numerous times in the past and has been a key ally not only in diplomacy but also strategically as they kind of give them access to the Mediterranean. In conclusion, Iran is kind of like a land that is constantly trying to figure out a way to reconcile the revolutionary ideals upon a fast-paced social media-induced generation of quiet culture rebels while simultaneously dealing with outside stigma. Hmm. What will Iran look like in 20 years? I don't know. But one I think Iran's going to look bomb in a couple years. Are you mad? I think Iran's gonna, it's just, because like you said, you said the average age is like under 30, but, and the new generation, they're gonna take, they, they're gonna take that place, buff, buff, all the resources they have with that land, they can only go up, they can only go up, is that the young people will be ruling it. that's they what I'm saying, Iraq. That's what I'm saying. That's it. Like I said, the young people will be ruling it. <laughs> that's it. That, that says it all. <laughs> the young people will be ruling it. The end. <laughs> and the way the young people are moving right now, <laughs> this country's got far in a couple years, 100%. And especially with the fact that a lot of people are moving out international. Um, you know, you have a lot of people that live in Turkey, all over Scandinavia, Europe, you know. And they all hate getting education in the states. You know what I'm saying? So, and if they plan all of a sudden wake up and say, "Oh, well, I'm going back home," with all those resources, forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> but hope you guys enjoyed that video. I did. I enjoyed that. That was a very educational video. 14 minutes. I got a lot of information. Of course, not everything. Um, I would obviously have to go there to experience it for myself to really feel the culture, feel the vibes um drink the tea you know what i'm saying <laughs> um but i definitely enjoyed that thank you guys for watching as always love life love life love life Peace.